Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Tuesday training with Tom, but it's not just Tom. We have David Lemon here with us as well. So David, good to see you as always. Good to see you, Tom. Hello, guys. And uh, as you've witnessed, if you've been here before, you know I'll share some insights, some knowledge uh, related to marketing, related to getting your message out there, and then we'll dive into Groove Pages today. And the good news is we have David who is way beyond uh, expertise level than I am. So if I hit any hiccups, he'll be there to help us. And he's also there to help with any questions that you have in the chat um, related to your uh, working with Groove Pages, Groove Cell, et cetera. So ask you questions as we're going through. Um, and stay tuned because today's training is going to be quite powerful. As you see in this slide, I'm going to share with you some insights. Now, I'll get to a point here that will rewind. It's like this is just kicking off today's training, and then we're going to hit a point where you're going to see experientially how to emulate what I'm doing in a live presentation that you can then take and use it in your VSLs, use it in your live webinars, use it in evergreen webinars, and we'll chat about all that uh, today, using it for your opt-in pages uh, video, using it for your... Uh, video that people get to in the fulfillment aspect. I'm going to be sharing as I train something that if you pay attention, it will have some ears click in your mind to say, aha, I like what Tom's doing. I think I could do something similar. So stay tuned. We're going to review that. But by me working with Mike Phil Sane from 2006 to 2011, being friends with him since January 2005, I saw and witnessed a lot of things behind the scenes that not many people are aware of. And one of them is uh, something that some people are aware of, but isn't as greatly known as uh, you will soon find out uh, how powerful it is. And that is the number one lesson that the world's greatest copywriter, writer, arguably, uh, who has who since passed away a few years ago, Gary Halbert, shared with Mike Filsane. So I'm going to get into that fun story. And if you've ever watched any of Mike's trainings, you know he's a great storyteller. And that's lesson number one. In your marketing, the better you become at telling stories, the better you will be able to get and keep people's attention and get them to know, like, and trust you and move forward with the sale. But we'll get into that story about the lesson that Gary Halbert shared with Mike Filsane that will be highly beneficial to you. And it ties kind of hand in glove, not the OJ glove where if the glove don't fit, you must quit. This glove fits perfectly with what was shared from Gary to Mike. I'm also going to show uh, a lesson with you and share a lesson with you that uh, a billion dollar marketer and author of the book Ready, Fire, Aim, and the subtitle of Ready, Fire, Aim is from zero to a hundred million in no time flat. Zero to a hundred million in no time flat. So give me a one in the chat if you'd like to go from zero to a hundred million in no time flat. Give me a one in the chat. Just let me know uh, you're paying attention uh, in the comments here, give me a one in the chat if you'd like to learn how to go from zero to a hundred million using some of the expertise there. Um, we're going to get into that. Uh, Christine, Missouri in the house, Ron uh, from the Netherlands, good to see you here as always. And while I'm waiting for the ones to come in, I'm going to progress. There we go, John. Yes, zero to a hundred million. And and I've here in South Florida. Uh, Mark Ford, who is his real name, his pen name is Michael Masterson. If you don't have the book, you'll want to get the book. It's called Ready, Fire, Aim. And it's absolutely brilliant. Uh, and the subtitle is From Zero to 100 Million in No Time Flat. So uh, O'Shea, Marvin, Ron, John, Audrey, Facebook user, Roosevelt, Facebook user, Veronica, Victor, all want to go from zero to 100 million. And I agree. 100 million is a cool milestone. And uh, you'll be learning the great lesson from Gary Halbert that he shared with Mike, as well as the one that Michael Masterson shared with me. And prior to us getting there, let me jump over here and just ask you. I saw some people uh, have been with us before. So Christine and Ron, good to see you here. Let me know in the chat where you're joining in from today. So go ahead and type in where you're joining in from. And uh, Facebook user. Uh, all right. So I see a Facebook user. Uh, if you hear me call out your name as Facebook user, go here once and follow that process. Go to StreamYard.com forward slash Facebook and you do that one time and it should be uh, every time you get, you join us here in this StreamYard uh, live stream, I'll be able to see your name instead of Facebook user. But anyhow, Facebook user says 
I'd like to go from zero to 200,000 in no time flat. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, we don't have to make it to 100 million. I agree. 200,000, you can you can do some good things with 200,000. And for some of you, 100,000, for some of you, 50,000, 20,000. And regardless of if you've made 100 million, I'm friends with Mark Ford, uh, his pen name, Michael Masterson. He wouldn't walk past a stack of $10,000, uh, right? It doesn't matter how much you make. You you always love the game and you do what it takes to to win. Uh, there's the great uh, Michael Jordan documentary, uh, The Last Dance. And, you know, Michael is earning exponentially more than any other team member on his team uh, of that final season of the Bulls. But when you watch, he's playing and gambling with the members on the planes. And uh, he's like, it doesn't matter how much. I just want your money in my pocket. He has that obsession with just winning. Well, as, an, as a marketer, as an entrepreneur, you just love the game so much. You just want to deliver that value that the money is a nice side benefit, but you don't pass it up. <laughs> like, I don't need the money, but I'll take the money, right? They're one of those types of things. A quote from Zig Ziglar. Um, so here we go. we got lots of great people here. I see this. Uh, Wolfgang, can't wait. Uh, me too. I'm excited to share this with you all. FA Miami, Paul. Wolfgang from Kelowna, Canada. Welcome from Canada. Audrey from Massachusetts. Vic from Lake Havasu City, Arizona. I was stationed in Yuma, Arizona in the Marine Corps. Facebook user, New Zealand. All right. I like that. FA Miami is in Miami. Roosevelt Cooper from New York City. Good to see you here, Roosevelt. Marvin, Quezon City, Philippines. All right. Canada and the Philippines so far. International. Um, Stefan. Stockholm is what I'm get, guessing that is a abbreviation, S-T-H-L-M, Stockholm. Facebook user, Mexico, John Everzact, Sunny Southern Cal. All right, I like Southern Cal. Christine shared that URL. If, if you heard me, a uh, person from Mexico, state the Facebook user, go to that URL. Christine shared there, streamyard.com forward slash Facebook. Do that once, and it should work for you. Another Facebook user from Singapore. Uh, use that same URL and I should be able to see your name. Uh, O'Shea from Waterford, Michigan. Veronica from Boston. Victor from Bronx, New York. All right. Paul from Kenya. Fantastic. I've been to uh, Uganda. I actually went on a trip to Uganda a few years ago and uh, we, we won an affiliate contest. And instead of getting a, a Porsche or something like that, we donated the money to uh, build a school over in Uganda. And it was an amazing trip that I'll never forget. Jeffrey, Jamaica man. Yes, I love Jamaica. I love going there. I have some great friends there as well. Ralph from LA. All right. Sticking around LA. California's got some crazy stuff happening. So <laughs> hopefully it doesn't get any crazier than, than what we've seen. Uh, it's a wild time. I'll say that. Uh, U.S. Manifesting Miracles and from New Zealand. Smooth Jazz DJ Saxman from Tampa. Fantastic. All right. So we are international. We're all over the U.S. and we're about to make that transition. And, and I'll make that clear when we get to it. But this is going to be a very educational uh, uh, trajectory modifying training that I feel each and every week is. But I'm super excited to share those two tips as well as an extra tip that I'll be sharing here in a second. Um, prior to that, I want to state this. So in the chat, uh, every week we pose this challenge. And the challenge is if you're joining us and have yet to take advantage of this, and even if you have and you've, you've done another one, we're still opening it up to this. If you've made a page in group pages, whether it's an opt-in page, whether it's a sales page that you would like us to take a look at and review, simply take that URL, paste it in the chat. Toward the end of our training, I'll, I'll look at the private chat that David will send me, the URLs that you post in there. We'll go in and give a quick look over of your page, give some recommendations on how to make it improvements to maximize the opt-in and maximize the sales, depending on if it's opt-in page or a sales page. So if you did it, go ahead and paste that URL in. We'll take a look at those uh, at the end of today's training. If you haven't, take that challenge for next week. By, the, by next Tuesday, same place, same time, commit to creating an opt-in page or a sales page that you're wanting us to take a look at. And it's going to be ready. It's going to be uh, action that you're taking steps forward, implementing the strategies to get out there and become that prolific offer creator. All right. So there we have that. And uh, we're going to dive into this topic, which is super exciting. So in order to do that, I'm going to stop sharing 
uh, this screen and we're going to transition. So I'm going to stop screen share. All right. So what we're going to talk about are some lessons. One is from the world's number one copywriter, Gary Halbert. Now, it's it's many people agree he is and, and other people who are great copywriters are like I disagree. I'm the best copywriter, but he is someone who has produced ridiculously amazing results. And even the others who have produced ridiculously amazing results, many of them studied Gary Halbert and his te uh, techniques and strategies. So Mike Phil Same had a chance to interview him. And I'm going to share what the, the, the tip is that he gave to Mike. I'm also going to share the tip that I have from uh, you know, I live in Boca Raton, Florida. Over in Delray Beach is where Michael Masterson lives. Uh, his real name is Mark Ford. He shared this other tip, which is very powerful. But first, I'm going to transfer into a lesson. And that lesson is never assume. They know who you are. Never assume they know who you are. So my name is Tom Beal, and we're going to transition here shortly into going into the importance of this. So if you've ever studied any of the other uh, marketers, including Mike Phil Same, including people like Ryan Dice, including people like Brendan Burchard, etc., the names will go on and on. Even Tony Robbins, even Tony subscribes to this. Never assume they know who you are. People my age, I'm 47. Later this month, I'll turn 48 years old, going back to the early 1990s, 90, 91, 92, 93. You couldn't flip on the TV without seeing the Tony Robbins infomercial for personal power. However, being 47, if I talk to someone that's 20 to 30 years old, they have no idea who Tony Robbins is unless they're in personal development or something that has brought them into that world. And so never assume, regardless of how big you get, never assume they know who you are. So I'm going to share something here that, first of all, I have to share my, my, uh, actually, I'll, I'll jump to that in a little bit. Actually, I'll bring this over. We're going to get back to those two lessons, but I'll keep this going with pen to paper because this is important. So when you start off videos, whether they're videos for the opt-in page, whether they're videos for the thank you page, whether they're videos for an upsell page, whether they're the videos of the fulfillment page, the thank you page, or any of other videos that you go through, when it's that front end exposure, when it's an opt-in page where you have people sending either affiliate traffic to you or you're, you're purchasing traffic and people are coming to you, you have to go back to that little tip that I'm sharing before I get to the other tips, never assume they know who you are. So you want to always follow the basics of marketing, right? The basics win in sports and the basics win in marketing. This is age, age old wisdom that Gary taught all the top uh, marketers and copywriters teach is if you don't follow this, you're, you're not following the proven strategic formula for greatest amount of opt-ins, greatest amount of sales, greatest amount of list building, communication. So everything you do, whether it's advertising, whether it's emails, whether it's thinking of a headline, whether it's creating a video, you have to follow these four letters. And you've heard me say them, and you'll probably hear me say them each and every training that we give because the basics are what win. I want you to, every time you're going into writing a subject line, every time you're going to create an ad, every time you're going to uh, send an email, every time you're going to create an opt-in page, every time you're going to create a sales page, I want you to think the basics, A-I-D-A, -A, attention, interest, desire, action. You have to get their attention. And today is the most difficult time in human history to get people's attention. Why? Because there's so many distractions. Also, humans have the lowest attention span. They said that the attention span of a human is the same or less than a goldfish. So, you know, tap on your goldfish's uh, fishbowl and you're going to keep that fish's attention the same amount of time as you're going to keep humans' attention. Think about this. They're swiping left. They're swiping right. They're swiping. They're swiping up and down on the Facebook and the Instagram feeds, the Snapchats, the TikToks, you name it, YouTube, Instagram. They're swiping and they're scrolling. They get the they get attention, uh, attention deficit disorder. Well, now it's uh, how the heck are you going to get and keep people's attention? The I is where you get to keep it. It's interest. Once you get their attention, how are you going to keep them interested to not 
You, you stopped them from scrolling when you got their attention. Now, how are you going to keep them interested? And in order, you know, and this all circles back to everyone's favorite radio station. WIIFM, what's in it for me? Not only do people have the attention span of a goldfish, this is the age of narcissism. <laughs> this is my world, and you just happen to be in it. That's what everybody is walking around and thinking. And if you can't really quickly, while you're getting their attention and gaining their interest, answer what's in it for me, they're scrolling, they're gone. What's in it for them? What's in it for me? As that person seeing your ad, what's in it for me? As the person that clicked on the ad and gets to your opt-in page, what's in it for me? You got to hit it hard. You got to hit it fast. And once you get their attention, you got to keep them interested. And that just, it goes back to the basics of copywriting, which is the purpose of a headline is to get them to read the first sentence. The purpose of the first sentence is to get them to read the second sentence and on and on and on. And nowadays you have to be hard hitting. What's in it for me? What's in it for me? What's in it for me? The benefit, the benefit of that benefit, the, you know, the deeper you peel that back, the more you enter the conversation in their mind, the more you're able to get their attention, get them interested, meaning keeping their attention. D is desire. You're having them desire what it is that you're talking about. So you've got their attention. You've got them interested. Now you have them desiring what it is that you're talking about. And then the ultimate goal is A, take action. And that action is, depending on if it's an opt-in page or a sales page, the action is to enter their name and email for the opt-in page or just email, whatever it is you're capturing, or sometimes name, email, phone number, whatever your system is, the A is for action. And, and you, it's your duty, it's your responsibility because you believe to the level of knowing that this will help them. You have to have that. And I've been number one in five sales organizations in the corporate world, working with Mike Filsame, working with Rich Sheffern, going on to produce tens of millions of dollars in results online. Uh, and it mostly generated from in the corporate world and the online world is the belief in my company, belief in my product or service, belief in myself. And if you don't believe in the company, the product or the service, you need to find something that you do because that transfers. Enthusiasm transfers and so does the belief. When you believe it, you will do all that you can to, to keep figuring out how am I going to get their attention? How am I going to get them interested, have them desirous of what I have and take the action I want them to take? And that's where the, the videos come in. That's where the sales copy comes in. That's where everything you do is it's I have to use all the tools that are available to me to present this in a manner that they're like, absolutely, I want this. Not only do I want it, I can't believe that it's for free if it's an opt in or I can't believe it's only this much. If it's a sales page, I was willing to pay five times, 10 times as much as this is the great deal, a.k.a. an irresistible offer. <laughs> right. This all leads to you doing your best. to create irresistible offers continuously. And um, this is through the various mo modalities that we have today. You know, that can be video, that can be audio, that can be text, that can be graphics, that can be infographics. All these things are at your disposal for you to communicate everything possible to get their attention, interest, get, gain their interest, have them desiring what you're talking about and wanting it and willing to take the actions to, to, to get it done. And now circling back to never assume they know who you are. This is where you get to use the nine words. That Mike and I used every time we sat down with a blank sheet of paper preparing to craft our offer. Tell your story. Share your results. and sell your system, right? So in getting their attention, gaining their interest, having them desiring it and having them take action, you can tell your story, share your results and sell your system all circling back to what's in it for them. So not, not in a manner of pounding your chest and telling your story, but in doing it in a manner that uh, is helping people understand, oh, 
wow, this person is someone that can help me get from where I am now to where I want to be. Boom. In a quick, fast, efficient, and effective manner. So all of this circles back to the first tip that I'm sharing with you is never assume people know who you are. So when, I, when you get their attention and gain their interest, you have to say, okay, great. So by the way, my name is Tom Beal, and who the heck am I, and why am I qualified to talk about this? Well, and that's where you can go into a little brief backstory. And so you'll, you'll figure out what your backstory is, but know this. I didn't think I had a backstory, and here's now what you'll hear from years of me crafting my story, basically just taking what was my life and figuring out uh, these are things that are not unusual to me, but are unusual for other people. And so here it is. So I was born to teenagers, raised around four divorces and six marriages as a child, went to nine different schools by eighth grade, was on and off welfare, uh, moving between all the schools. By the time I learned everybody's name in my class, we moved to another school. So I made a decision to stop remembering everyone's name because as soon as I remember their name, we move. That was what I made that decision at eight, nine years old. Right. And in all that, I still was a decent student. I still excelled in sports. And through all that, I still had love for my family. Right. They taught me things that have still uh, paid dividends in my life. And that was if you truly believe in something and you set your heart and mind to it, you can achieve it. So I went on to be a top athlete. I went on to become a national bicycle champion, a top wrestler. And uh, the national championship I won in bicycle freestyle, the tricks on the bikes, I was 15 years old. So I had sponsors. I had, you know, a nice life at that age of traveling and touring around and doing tricks, doing shows um, and was the MC for the, the, the actual team that I was uh, uh, riding for. And uh, through all of that, went to college, dropped out when I was working in corp in, in a factory. I was also working part time in the mall and a Marine Corps recruiter came by and asked me, you know, if I was happy and I'm always a happy person. But I said, you know, not really. I'm working at, at this place and not, I just feel like I'm not fulfilling my potential. He's like, do you like to travel? I said, I love to travel. Long story short, I joined the Marine Corps, quit both my jobs, I was at Marine Corps boot camp. And it's like that that movie uh, of old uh, with Goldie Hawn when she gets to boot camp. She's like, what the heck did I sign up for? I, I I woke up in boot camp and like, what did I sign myself up for? This is crazy. But once I figured the system out, I became the number one honor graduate from my, my uh, platoon out of Marine Corps boot camp in Paris Island, South Carolina. Went on to get three meritorious promotions in four years, was up for the Marine enlisted commissioning program. Uh, didn't end up taking that. But through all of that, after I left the Marine Corps, went into corporate America, became number one in five separate sales organizations. and then decided it's time for me to begin an entrepreneurial journey and quickly skidded on my nose, which was unusual for me because I'd been the top athlete. I'd been the top Marine. I'd been number one in, in multiple sales organizations. So I figured, well, wow, this entrepreneurship thing should be easy. Skidded across my nose, had the scrapes, the bruises and, and the pain uh, of, of not figuring out as quickly as I thought I would. Then teamed up uh, with some people that I met at some live events. Live events changed my life. One of the people I met in January 2005 was Mike Vilsame. We met again March 2005. We became friends. We helped each other out throughout the remainder of 2005. Finally, early 2006, we teamed up and we worked together from 2006 to 2011. Impacted hundreds of thousands of lives throughout the world positively, traveled the world, spoke on stages, impacted lives, did tremendously uh, as far as results were, were uh, related to as well. Then I ended up... Uh, going to become president for Rich Sheffern at Strategic Profits. And same thing, traveling around, speaking on stages, impacting people's lives positively, etc. And through all that, I found out some techniques and strategies that have helped many highly successful people become happier, more fulfilled, and continue to grow their success, but also have been able to impact people that are just starting out. And having seen, you know, from, from the just starting out with zero results, but just ambition to people that have done hundreds of millions, I've been able to help people from across all walks and, and fill that gap uh, to, to regardless of where someone is, I can reach them where they are and help them get to that next level. And so that's a brief story of who I am. How can I help you? Well, you know, we are here today because 
my previous business partner, Mike Vilsame, is one of the co-founders. And I also partnered up with John Cornetta. Uh, we did several live events together years ago. And so I'm great friends with John. I got to meet Matt Sheralta. I've yet to meet Matt Naus, but I'm, I'm great friends with uh, several of the co-founders as well as uh, have worked with Donna Fox for, for several years of that history that I described. So uh, very, very um, uh, long history with the founders of this company. And they, knowing who I am and the, and the value that I bring, said, Tom, would you be willing to do weekly trainings for our people? And we worked out an agreement and here we are. So I want to thank the founders for believing so much in me and believing in you that we made this happen. Right. So this is something that the founders wanted to make an investment in your future. They have the amazing software, but they know that software alone isn't going to do it you need to have the marketing knowledge and know-how you got to have the proper strategies in place or else none of the software systems will work so that's where i come in and that's where this information will help you so that was a brief segment of telling my story i went a little bit longer than i would than i would recommend because of this unique situation and circumstance right this is this is an additional training and uh you guys for many part, I recognize many of your names. Uh, at, so we've seen each other on many occasions, but I also know this is probably the first time for many people. So you never want to skip the fact of thinking people know who you are. So you'll see Brendan Burchard, you'll see Ryan Dice, you'll see Mike Fulsame, you'll see John Cornetta, you'll see all of the top uh, experts. Not assume people know who they are. They'll, they'll give a brief description of who I am and why you would want to listen to them. So there is an example for you to emulate. I would shorten it and in, in, in a shorter fashion, like I'll be, I'm being interviewed on a big uh, podcast tomorrow. Basically it's, hey, my name's Tom Beal. Uh, you know, I, I lived through a lot of adversity, born to teenagers, raised around four divorces and six marriages. Uh, went to nine different schools by eighth grade as a child. And through that was able to become a national bicycle champion, the number one honor graduate out of United States Marine Corps boot camp, number one in five separate sales organizations and help produce multiple tens of millions of dollars in results online, working with some of the best and most well-recognized names in the internet marketing and personal development niches. And uh, in doing so, have figured out some systems and processes to help people wherever they are on their journey, get from where they are to where they want to be. So I'm super excited to be here today to help share some of those strategies with you. So there you saw a condensed version, right? Probably a minute, minute and 20 seconds max. So you practice your telling your story as to why people would want to listen to you. And over the years, it's going to get better. It's going to get more refined and it will roll off your tongue. Uh, as, as with anything, the more you do it, the more repetition, the more that uh, you fine tune it and the more that it will be able to resonate with people. So you get their attention, keep their attention, gain their interest, have them desiring what you have and willing to take action. So there we have it. Now I do have a little, so users were saying that your your uh, screen is very grainy. Um, it's like your internet connection is not the best today. Hmm. Um, you do, at this moment it is fine, but when we when we put you on a big screen, to be oops, not like that, but it okay. seems quite all right now. You were when you were writing, nothing could be seen on the on the on on the board but let's just leave it as it is now okay I will could leave you it see it. it could you see it i can see it now yeah okay could you see it or was it not available before it was really grainy it was really okay. uh stuck. yeah all right well this is a great lesson uh this is a great lesson so um here's here's the thing that you need to embrace right away uh stuff's not going to always go right period there's going to be problems there's going to be challenges there's going to be technical difficulties there's going to be glitches and you just have to be okay with it. Things aren't gonna be perfect. So if you're someone out there that has the perfectionism, uh, you know, everything has to be perfect, you might wanna loosen that strain. It's not gonna be perfect. Life never is, and entrepreneurship never is, and definitely internet marketing never is. The journey is never a straight path of, oh, simple, yeah, I got in and just, boy, skyrocketed to the top. There's gonna to be hiccups, there's gonna be challenges. So in the Marine Corps, I learned three words, Improvise, 
adapt and overcome. So guess what? It happens, as Forrest Gump would say, when someone, oh, you just stepped in it, it happens. So what? You keep moving forward. And the good news is, you can probably still hear me. doesn't matter what the hell I'm writing. I, I, I suck. I'm left-handed anyhow. You probably can't read it anyhow. doesn't matter. Can you listen? So basically, the bottom line is, take the best, leave the rest. Write that down. Take the best. Leave the rest. Probably can't read it because I can't read it. Take the best, leave the rest. You work with what you got. And guess what? When you're out there creating content, stuff's going to go wrong. Guess what you don't want to do? Oh, well, you know, you don't want to divert yourself and do all this stuff. Like, hey, stuff happens. You, you trudge forward. You keep moving forward. You improvise, you adapt, you overcome. And if you think it's going to be simple, if you think there's not going to be problems, you're setting yourself up for massive stress, chaos, and anxiety. So just recognize stuff's going to happen. You roll with it. You keep on improvising, adapting, and overcoming. So that's just life. That's entrepreneurship. And the quicker you can get over it and get over perfectionism and just move forward with trusting the process, trusting that you have insights, you have information, you have the goods, the knowledge that can take the people who are here to the next level. And when you do that, you don't sweat the small stuff as that one book uh, and, and course talked about. You just you deliver the goods. And here's the other thing, SW4. SW4. Some will, some won't. So what? Someone's waiting. Some people are going to like you. Some won't. So what? There's someone out there waiting. Some will, some won't. So what? Someone's waiting. All right. So this is part of the entrepreneurial journey. And, and so when you're doing this in getting people's attention, gaining their interest, having them desirous of taking action, um, desirous of what you have enough to where they're taking action, uh, you also have to integrate telling your story so that they see you as someone that they should be listening to, telling your story in a quick, concise manner that answers what's in it for me. Why should I pay attention to this? And if you do that, you're going to get what's known as... KLT. They're going to know you. They're going to like you. They're going to trust you. Eventually, it's going to be they're going to know you. They're going to love you. They're going to trust you. Like they just know that you're there for them. You've got their back. And when you reach that level, you can, you know, you're like Mike Phil same. You're like John Cornetta. You're like Matt Seralta, Matt Naus. They got your back, right? And when they put stuff out there, you also have some leeway like, hey, it's not going to be perfect when it first releases. Just like Groove Member is out now. You know, and that's awesome. And group, but but guess what? Any new software, you have to know, even if it's past the beta stage, software is going to have some some bugs, some development issues, and just that's just how it works. No matter how much money is put into it, how much time, effort, energy, there's just going to be that process. It, when it first releases, it's going to have some hiccups, and then it's going to get better and better and better as time unfolds. But anyhow, when people know, like, and trust you, um, and you also set that expectation, like, look. I'm not perfect. We, we are committed to getting this out there. Uh, we're not going to wait till it's perfect because that will never happen. I mean, Bill Gates has been the richest person in the world prior to Bezos uh, for roughly 30 plus years, maybe 40 years. And Microsoft's still not perfect. <laughs> Think about that. Had he waited till Microsoft was perfect, he would have missed out on you know hundreds of billions of dollars. Same thing applies to you. Don't wait till everything's perfect. Once it's at the good enough stage, it's a good enough level, you can release it and have the commitment to be behind it and continually improve it. Okay? So um, let's see what's going on here. Uh, do a split scene as a test as he talks. Okay? So still people having video movement? Okay. So... When I jumped in, it became clearer, but okay, it, I'm right. not quite sure. Um, as I as soon as I leave, it's like it, it's getting again grainy. Now it's now it's looking wonderful, so it's like I'm bringing clear uh, clarity into your life, Tom. Very nice, very nice. <laughs> so 
what I want to do is share my screen and then we'll see if yeah. um, we can get into some other stuff and maybe that helps out. So what I'm going to share here is something that I, I've shared in a couple trainings uh, a time ago, but this is uh, one of the things I learned from one of my mentors, Zig Ziglar. And Zig had what was called a wall of gratitude. So I created a wall of gratitude years ago. And I would encourage you, if you don't have one, to create one. And this is in Google Photos. So when I take my photos on my phone, Google Photos allows it to, to synchronize and I can pick which ones I want to go in the wall of gratitude. And I start off with some family photos and then it transitions into some business uh, photos. Right. And, and now as I look at this, like, you know, my mom passed away at 52 years old in 2007. There's my mom and my, uh, my sisters, my mom and my kids. My dad passed away a couple years later at 56 years old. So I've got some sentimental reminders in here uh, of how brief this journey is. You know, so to always, you know, uh, carpe diem, seize the day, you know, so the, these reminders are here. And I have many marketing friends as I scroll down that aren't here any longer either. Uh, Zig Ziglar is no longer here. There's me with Zig. Uh, the redhead's no longer here. Zig's, uh, he, he affectionately called his wife the redhead. They're both gone, right? Uh, Bob Proctor's still around. Joe Vitale's still around. Jay Abraham's still around. Rich and Mike still around. Jeff Walker's still around. Brian Tracy's still around. Brett Michaels, you know. The rock star, uh, Tony Robbins, Joe Sugarman, uh, et cetera. But Jim Rohn's not around. Jim's gone. Uh, Jeffrey Gittimer's still around. Uh, Jim Kelly, the Hall of Fame quarterback. I was president of a company with him. Don LaPree's no longer around. He actually took his life. He took his own life. Uh, Don LaPree, the infomercial king, you know, one tiny ad uh, because the government was after him uh, when he had his ultimate, uh, the greatest vitamin in the world. Uh, the government claimed it was a Ponzi scheme and seized all his assets. And, you know, he he, he uh, took his own life. You know, so this is a reminder, you know, Brendan Burchard, Russell Brunson. Here's Michael Masterson. This is actually he and I sitting having a cigar in Delray over here. Uh, you know, this is uh, uh, the, the, the person that owns Patron and also the uh, J. Paul Mitchell uh, hair products, the billionaire. Uh, he, he's there. Uh, Russell and I wrestling. Brandon Burchard giving uh, uh, Rich Sheffer and I a tour of uh, the West Coast. A whole bunch of many, you know, many well-known, respected, uh, the, the Shark Tank guys, Tim Ferriss, et cetera. So this is a wall of gratitude. And just in scrolling through this, you may be like, holy crap, uh, Tom, who does Tom not know? You know, and being in the industry for so long, that answer is uh, not, it's not just who I know, but who knows me? Right. So hanging out uh, with Bobby Brown and Vanilla Ice and uh, Vince Taylor, uh, Mr. Olympia, Coolio, Mini Me's no longer around. Terrence Howard, uh, Mind Freak, you know, uh, Suge Knight, Suge Knight's uh, still around, but is in prison <laughs> from Death Row Records. Anyhow, uh, it's been one heck of a journey. And so the wall of gratitude not only is a nice thing that brings a smile to my eyes and my my face when I'm looking at it. But it's a reminder, another marketer who's no longer here, another marketer who's no longer here, passed away. Mike and I, years ago, look at this, from uh, 2005, Russell Brunson and I from 2005. Uh, this just puts a smile on my face. It's a nice memory. Uh, me and my, my stepbrother, he ended up playing in the NFL for 10 years. Me and the Marine Corps, me wrestling, doing my bicycle trick riding. All these things are nice. Uh, going uh, NASCAR driving with some marketers, going to the Super Bowl with some marketers. Lots of good memories. So if you don't have a wall of gratitude, I would highly recommend you do that. And it does twofold things. One, it's going to bring you joy. It's going to bring you happiness. It's going to help you to remember Carpe Diem, seize the day. Uh, and it's also going to be a nice thing that can help you go find a whole bunch of cool photos that when you share them will help introduce you in your life and your journey to other people so they get to know you at a different level. Uh, this is a guy who lives near us. Uh, it's a Pagani, a $1.3 million car. I always like it when we, we run into him. It's a sweet ride. Um, anyhow, uh, John Cornetta, Mike Vilsame at uh, GrooveCon. Anyhow, the wall of gratitude is perfect uh, on a multifold level. So if you don't have one, go create one. And there is that. Um, now, what I'm going to do is jump over to the lesson. Right now, now this is the other, this is another little trick. So in teaching you all this so far, I've yet to share what was promised in the beginning, right? And hopefully I did it in a manner 
that not only didn't uh, disappoint, but was like, holy crap, I got all this other value that I wasn't even expecting because I came on expecting these two little uh, lessons, which are little, but very profound. And when you learn them, I'm looking forward to hearing your feedback from it because this is very, very powerful. So what did Gary Helbert tell Mike Filsame as one of the most powerful lessons? Here's the story. So Mike Filsame was doing a telesummit and he had several guest experts on there. One of the guest experts was Gary Helbert. And it was Mike and several other marketers who were asking questions. And Mike's question was related to split testing. And so Mike's going to ask, you know, uh, Gary Halbert, who has a reputation of not being so nice, you know, not being, you know, uh, uh, too tactful. He's going to share what's on his mind and it might not it might hurt people's feelings. You know, it, it, it wouldn't sit well with people that get triggered. Right. If you hit him with some questions he doesn't like, he's going to respond and you'll know he doesn't like it. So Mike's there, man, like intimidated. Like, what am I going to ask him? And this is, by the way, like late 2004, early 2005. And so Mike's like, okay, my topic that I'm going to ask him on is split testing. And so like, should I ask him, do we split test the headline? Do we split test the colors of the font? Do we split test the color of the site? Like, so he, he basically posed a question that was related to what should we split test first? And he's like, should it be the headline? Should it be this? Should it be that? And Gary Halbert had some profanities. He's like, you stupid internet marketers, you guys think it's all blah, blah, blah. And he goes off on his rant and he said, the first thing that you test is test the offer. You test the offer. Now, I'm gonna share some insights that at the time, not everybody knew, but Mike's like, oh, okay, test the offer. In Mike's mind, he's like, what the heck does that mean? Like, what do you mean test the offer? And so it didn't really settle in. It wasn't like an epiphany right away. And I'm going to explain what the epiphany is. So split testing, as you know, is very, very powerful. You want to be split testing to see here's uh, the control and you want to beat the control. Like, so you're testing various things. So when you test the offer, the offer is literally the here's what I've got proposition. Here's what I've got for you. So when you get to telling your story, sharing your results and selling your system, when you're selling your system, it's the, hey, here's what I've got for you. So think of testing the offer is let's go back in time for those people who are uh, remembering the, the commercials that had the Sports Illustrated. And hey, when you order Sports Illustrated today, you're going to receive this cool NFL phone. You know, it's a football phone. You're going to receive this for free when you uh, get, get your subscription of Sports Illustrated. That's so the offer is you get the Sports Illustrated subscription and you get the football phone. It's a it looks like a football, but it's a phone back when phones used to plug into the wall. That was one offer. Then they tested another offer. When you subscribe to Sports Illustrated, you're going to get the swimsuit edition for free. Right. So that's a whole different. It's the same base of Sports Illustrated um, uh, subscription, but it's a different bonus. Right. So similarly, when you're testing the offer. You have to say, OK, this this is one way of packaging. it. So when you get it, here's what I've got. Here's what it will do for you. Here's what to do next. That's that's the one offer. And then the, the other one that you tested against is here's what I've got. Here's what it will do for you. Here's what to do next. It's similar, but it's different. It's a whole different offer. So it may, in many cases, have different bonuses. It's, it's, it's the whole kit and caboodle. When you get it, you know, one offer could be you're going to get uh, this journal and you're going to get these iPod, uh, you know, the, 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 the AirPod Pros. And the other one is when you get it, you're going to get this Bose, you know, uh, headphones. Like that, there can be two separate offers that are testing and does one out pull the other. Now. I'm going to share something that may have been something you've experienced, but it's definitely something I've experienced. Have you ever bought something twice? <laughs> right? Have you ever bought something twice? And, and many times, I'll, I'll give one example that I know of. So a great marketer, Dan Kennedy. Dan Kennedy is brilliant at repurposing. So he had courses he sold for high ticket dollars years ago that people bought. And then, you know, fast forward years, he came out with a course, totally different name, totally different offer that was the same course from years ago. 
And guess what happened? People bought the same course years later, different name, different offer. That's a that's a wide range of, of, of examples. But uh, I've done it uh, where I bought the same offer more than once and didn't even know it was the same offer. Why? Because they were testing the offer. And it, it appeared it was a whole different story, a whole different packaging, a whole different bonus. And then when I got it, it's like, oh, wow, this is the same thing that I got on the other one. So the goal is not to confuse and get people to buy it twice. The goal is for you to test, as Gary Halbert shared, the offer to see, hey, here's the, what the, the what the percentages are. We have 100 people visiting this page and two of them are buying. We have 100 people visiting this page. And four of them are buying. We've doubled the conversion from a 2% to a 4% with a different offer. Then, you know, you, you could test the offer again. And once you fine tune and you got the control of that offer, that's when you start testing the headlines. That's when you start testing more of the intricacies of the winning offer. But the first thing is to find the winning offer that gets in two scenarios, whether you're building opt-in pages or sales pages, that gets the most opt-ins and or gets the most sales, depending on what page you have. If it's an opted page, you want to test that offer. You know, and, and one of the ways that um, you can do that is think of an offer, you know, or think of that's the marketplace that you're going after, the whole marketplace. In the beginning, your one offer is touching on certain hot points and certain uh, pain points and difficulties and challenges. And your other offer may be targeting other difficulties and pain points. And as you, you narrow it down, you know, okay, so if the, if the second one wins, you could try a different offer, 2.5, you know, that, that's different pain points that goes deeper into certain things. Does that out pull the other one? And uh, what you're going to find is one offer is going to win over the first offer that you came up with. So it's up to you to going back to the drawing board and asking yourself, here's what I've got. Here's what it will do for you. Here's what to do next for offer. Number one, what is that package? And there's a thing called value stack. Right. So when you're creating the offer, you throw in all these. And when you get it, you get this bonus and you get that's valued at this. When you get this, this bonus, which is valued at this total value, you know, large number slash. Now you get it for not half of that, not half of that, not half of that, only this, right? So the value stack builds up the value of your offer. And when you do a testing of a different offer, it could have different bonuses, different value stack. And that's the first thing that you test. So that's the, that's the number one thing that Mike learned from Gary Halbert. And when Gary shared it, you know, Mike didn't admit it, but he's like, I didn't know what the heck he was talking about. What do you mean test the offer? So this hopefully sinks into you. The first thing that you'll want to test is the offer. So you, you get a blank sheet of paper. Okay. What's my offer? They're going to get this. That's the deliverable. That's the main product. That's the, that's, you know, here's what they're going to get. What other bonuses are we going to add? So the whole kit and caboodle is the offer number one. Then you break out another sheet of paper. Okay. What's something that we could put together. That's a totally different offer that speaks to the same demographic, the same psychographic has people with the same fears, worries, concerns, doubts, and same dreams, goals, and aspirations, but a completely different offer. Just like we talked about the Sports Illustrated, where, hey, if you order, you're going to get the free football phone. We're going to have some people that like that. And then when they test it, when you order Sports Illustrated, you also get the swimsuit edition. There's going to be people that like that. And then which one out pulls? And then you may be able to say, you know what? We're going to give away this the phone and the swimsuit edition. And that's where you could have a combo. Like, okay, once you get feedback from people. What was it? This is a great question you want to ask people. When did you know this was for you? At what point did you know this was for you? Especially if you're doing like a video sales letter or a webinar or something in that lot that, 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 that has a process or uh, a product launch type of four part video series, whatever your, your lead in is. When you get to speak with clients, if you can ask them, when did you know that this was for you? You, you want to take note of that. You want to keep a spreadsheet. Well, it was this reason. Oh, wow. And you're going to find some common themes. This is what pushed me over the edge. And if that's a bonus, okay, that bonus. And then if you find one bonus had popularity and then in the split test, the other part of a bonus, then you can mix those bonuses together and have that third offer. 
All right, so I've been talking a lot. I'm going to look over the comments here, make sure y'all are with me. So give me a five if you're with me. Give me a five in the comments. Give me a two if you're not with me. Give me a five if you're with me. Give me a two if I lost you somewhere along the lines and, and followed up with a two with any question that you have. A five if you're with me, a two if you're not with me. All right, and I see some good stuff over here. Uh, yeah, Roosevelt Cooper. Yep. Brought, bought one of Mike's products twice just because I wanted the bonus. Yes. Yep. I've done that too. Uh, have a great story. Uh, actually, Mike and I, uh, I had an idea. I'm on the phone with Mike one time years ago uh, when I was president of Strategic Profits for Rich Sheffern. And I'm on the phone with Mike and I asked him, hey, are you promoting Brandon Burchard's Experts Academy? He's like, yeah. And I told Brendan I'm going to win it. I said, huh, I just had a call with Brendan and I told him I'm going to win it. And we had an idea like, why don't we why don't we do it together? And so we pulled together. It was me, Mike and Rich Sheffern. And we won and we beat Jeff Walker by double of what he he sold, like 100 some units. We sold like 200 some units. Why? Because people that already had Brennan's product wanted to buy our from our affiliate link to get the bonuses we had because the bonuses were so valuable. And um, uh, it, it was incredible. And, and so many, many people purchased. Even after that, they already owned the $2,000 course. They bought it again for two more thousand dollars because our bonus was so over the top. All right. So Marvin's following me, Oscar. All right. Lots and lots of people following. Okay, good. So it's making sense. That makes me feel good. Uh, all right. Y'all y'all are keeping up. Lots of fives from client ACQ. Good, good, good. Smooth jazz. Loving this. Great. All right. All right. So good. I'm here. Five, but video is bad. All right. Well, listen, the good news is it's mostly audio. So, so listen and uh, take record this recording, take better notes. Okay, cool. All right, good. So everybody's with me. Awesome. So that's the first one. Test the offer. And, and yes, I saw someone uh, asking about um, even for advertising. Yes. The, the first thing you don't want to just change a little bit of the, of an ad that you're running, you, you basically have one ad and have another ad that's totally different. And which one wins out of uh, 500 people that saw the one ad and 500 saw the other, is there a clear winner? And testing that offer is gonna be a big epiphany for those who are willing to implement it. Because a lot of people do the minuscule testing when it's the real big stuff of like, is the offer the best that we can possibly have? And, and it really boils back to you know doing the due diligence to really think, what do we, what must we have that's not overboard? Like, because you don't want to do the thud factor, like uh, of old, because that just means more work. And we're going to give you 500 DVDs that are an hour a piece. That's 500 hours of DVDs. People are like, well, I don't want to watch 500 hours of DVDs. Whoa, what the heck, right? So you don't want to go overboard. And Rich Sheffern shared this with me, and this is very key when you're crafting those offers. For every bonus or for every added thing that you put into that offer, you have to ask yourself something that Rich taught me was, is this helping people make, or basically, are we going to get more people saying yes with this bonus or not? Like, and if you can't clearly say, yeah, this is going to push people over the fence that weren't already pushed over, right? So an example, so back to that Brennan Burchard thing. Well, what if we do this? What if we do this? He's like, okay, great. We could do that, but we have to ask ourselves, are people already in? Uh, and they're going to be, oh, wow, I love this added bonus too. Or are people not in yet? But when we add this extra bonus, oh, I'm in now for this. I want this, right? So the key is to, to really discern, is the bonus pushing people over the fence? Or is it just another bonus that are people are already over the fence? Like, oh, cool. I'll take that too. Oh, cool. I'll take that too. You want to, to, create the bonuses and create the offer that everything that you add takes people who weren't already in, but then say, Ooh, because of that, I'm in now, right? That, that one, that is the, the, the straw that broke the camel's back type of thing. But the person, that one extra bonus, that thing, the value it brings, I'm in now. I wasn't in, but now I'm in. And obviously that's all hypothesis, you know, it, it, without doing uh, uh, market tests, uh, you don't really know, but you have to use your discernment. Is this going to help create more sales for us? Keep that in mind. So don't just add bonuses to add bonuses. 
Um, do you follow certain rules, Tom, about what you offer in bonuses? I think that that kind of answers that question. You don't just throw in everything in the kitchen. You know, <laughs> you don't throw the kitchen sink in it and the, all that stuff just to do it and build that uh, overwhelm or work. You want to strategically think, is this additional bonus going to help people who are on the fence say I'm in now because of that bonus or not? Right. And it's literal discernment because nothing, you know, even surveying people isn't the real response. It's, it's literally when, when credit cards in hand, like that's, are, are people buying it or not? And so it takes, it takes practice. It takes testing to, to use, uh, you know, like, like that muscle of discernment of, is this bonus going to push more people over that weren't already in or not? And it's, you know, so we didn't put a lot of bonus, extra bonuses in that we could have, but they really didn't have that oomph. They really didn't feel like, you know, that is that really going to make our percentage of conversions more? We don't really think so. We think we've got it good enough. So hopefully that's helpful. All right. Um, so there we go. So that's the first tip from Gary Helbert to Mike Filsane. First thing you want to test is the offer. And that's helpful. Y'all, y'all were uh, on board with that. Now, something that goes hand in glove with this is what Michael Masterson, uh, his pen name of the book, Ready, Fire, Aim. You want to get that book if you don't have it yet, how to go from zero to 100 million in no time flat. Um, so Mark Ford, uh, as you saw the picture, him and I sit in the cigar bar and some other events uh, here in South Florida. Um, he shared this. Um, this is, this is going to take a little while to describe. All right, so I'm going to describe what this means. We're in the hit business. We're in the hit business. So when crafting the offer, it's like crafting the hit. And think of a hit like in the, the mus musical world. So think of the band that's been around for almost probably longer than I've been alive, the Rolling Stones. They have the song Satisfaction from the late 60s, <laughs> right? I was born in 72, so before me, Satisfaction came out. They didn't stop after they produced Satisfaction. So think of Satisfaction as one offer, and then they have another song, and have another song, and have another song. And back in the day, they would write so many songs, and they'd have to narrow it down to which ones are we going to put on the album. Then it went to which ones are we going to put on the cassette tape, which ones are we going to put on the CD. And, and it takes discernment because they, too, don't know. They have a feeling, we think this song is going to be a hit. But the marketplace decides what's a hit. If you have friends in the music industry, they're just like marketers. Marketers are like, man, I, this is this is really going to kick butt. This is going to be this opt-in page is going to convert. It might be a hundred percent conversion. It's that good, and then it's got twenty percent conversion. Like, what the heck? It doesn't like what's going on here. It just doesn't make any sense. So, same thing applies in the music business. They create every song that they create. They think is a possible hit. But the marketplace decides what the hits are. So think about that. So as an entrepreneur, you use your discernment to craft the offers, but you're in the hit business. And when you when you create that hit, just like the Rolling Stones didn't stop with satisfaction. Well, Mark Ford doesn't stop. Michael Masterson doesn't stop with, you know, he's got one offer that his company crafted that did darn near half a billion dollars, $500 million. While it was in the multiple hundreds of millions of dollars, guess what they were doing? crafting the next hit, crafting the next hit. They don't stop, right? And, and think of it as, you know, in the hits related to the music world, the Rolling Stones don't stop. You as the entrepreneur, you're continually creating hits. So uh, we're in the hit business. And then it's also, if you think back to American baseball, right, in the hit business, you got to step up to the plate. And, and you get pretty good where you can get on base more times than not. But guess what? If you're at 300, which means you get you know, basically 30%, you get on base three out of 10 times, you're probably going to be in the Hall of Fame three out of 10 times. That means you don't get on base seven out of 10 times, but you still get back up to base to try to get that hit. right? And you have better discernment. You have you know better discipline to know when to swing, when not to swing, but you still... Don't get on base 100% of the time. 
Mark Ford, Michael Matchston, still has losers. Gary Halbert still has losers. You know, back when, when he was still alive, he still produced losers before his passing. You aren't getting on base 100% of the time. And as an entrepreneur, we talked about how problems are going to happen. But also you have to recognize it only takes in baseball the 300%, you know, which is 30%. You know, they call it 300 average batting average, but it's 30%. You're on base three out of 10 times, you're, you're going to be in the Hall of Fame. In business, it may be at that 30% success rate. Out of 10 offers you create, you're successful two to three out times. You know, but then you get better and better. Now Mark and his company is probably six out of 10, seven out of 10, because they produced billions of dollars of results, but they still have uh, offers that don't fail. Now, the, the funny part about that story is the offer that was over the multiple hundreds of millions was a failed offer from years prior. Years prior, they released it and they're like, man, this is going to do great. This is awesome. Released it, dud, didn't go anywhere sat on the shelf, collected digital dust for years. They're like, man, I don't know. They, they, they blew the dust off, the digital dust off, revised it, re-released it, and holy cow, it took off, and it was one of their biggest, it was the biggest uh, information uh, product uh, campaign ever, uh, hundreds of millions of dollars. It was a failure years prior, too soon. And, and, and the offer they, re they dusted the offer off. It wasn't the same offer. They revised it. They updated it. A new offer went from a failure to hundreds of millions of dollars. So that's why I wanted to share these two together are hand in glove and not the OJ glove. If the glove don't fit, you must have quit. This is the real deal of it fits like a glove, like Ace Ventura, like a glove parks, you know, crazy flipping and boom lands perfectly this is how it works so that offer failed years prior in the hit business producing hit producing hit producing hit and then looked at their their uh, record like man what about that one we thought that was a winner but it failed what if we dust that off revise it they changed the offer and it went on to do hundreds of millions of dollars boom you're in the hit business you know that it's time to test the offer so in doing so, now it's time to take this knowledge, bring it over to Groove Funnels, bring it into Groove Pages, bring it into Groove Cell, and use this to craft your message. Um, and my hope is this has some things, gears going in your mind of like, holy crap. I want, I want to plan a couple things. You know, you are in the hit business and don't get caught up on ones that don't take off. All right. Yeah. I, I struck out. Guess what? I'm stepping back up to bat. Don't get married to your offers. Don't get, you know, that's not your baby. Like you do your best. You give it your best effort, but even the hall of famers strike out. Even the people that produce the multiple hundreds of millions of dollars from the one campaign that was from a failed offer years prior. Think about that. And don't let any small bump in the road, hold you back from being a prolific creator. So, so the word is prolific. So the funny part is when Gary told Mike, you need to test the offer. Mike's like, the heck does that mean? Right. He didn't know what that meant at the time. Now, you know, hopefully uh, uh, at a level that, that you grasp and it will settle in even more as, as you think about this. So this whole, we're in the hit business was summarized in one word, Tom, you need to become prolific a prolific offer creator and prolific hit creator. So what is prolific? And that the first example I used of we're in the hit business is the Rolling Stones. They are prolific. They've produced hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of songs over the decades. They're prolific. They're continually producing new music, even though they've had hit after hit after hit. You need to become prolific to become that hit creator. And guess what? You're going to get better. The more you step up to bat, the more you're, you're able to, to get in there and get at it. You're going to go from 20% to 30% to 40% to six to 50, 60%. You'll get better and better as you do it, but you got to be willing to step up even, and especially when you're in a slump, guess what? Slumps happen, not just in baseball, not just in music and, and one hit wonder in the music world, right? Some people think, well, crap, maybe I was just a one hit wonder. And no, you, it just takes the discipline. It takes the continual commitment.
to be that prolific hit creator, testing the offers and using the tools at your disposal. And one, as Gary Halbert says, you're only one sales letter away from changing your life. You're only one hit away from changing your life. One hit. So step up to the plate and do the work. Create the opt-in page, create the sales pages, inside group pages, using group sell, using them together. You have the tools and the tools keep getting better and better. For those that have the package, you, it's getting better and better every day. So you got Groove member, you got Groove video, you got Groove mail coming soon. You got all the Groove suite products um, that are coming soon to just be the ultimate toolbox to help you be that hit creator. And while I'm saying that, I'm actually going to log into and show you. We're gonna we're gonna go around, and I think I have to allow you to see my screen. Let me make sure I do that. Share my screen. Boom. Okay. So we're going to go into Groove Funnels. And if you don't have the package, I'm going to share that uh, you'll want to go check it out. So once you go to app.groovefunnels.com, you'll want to learn more by clicking here. And this is an offer that soon will not be available, right? So I, I, I don't know the date, but I do know it's not forever, right? So if you don't have it yet, you want to go there for two reasons. One, uh, make sure that you don't miss out. And two, look at a brilliantly executed, irresistible offer. Um, as you saw, like this is all free. You know, you gain access to what used to be, you know, just shy of a hundred bucks per month for free. But there are ways that you can get more. And, and it goes into all the different stuff that you get uh, with the Lifetime Platinum uh, and, and other options. Uh, you want to test it out to see a brilliantly laid out irresistible offer with no sales pressure, right? I'm sure you've been in situations where it's total sales pressure. This is zero sales pressure, but uh, doing extremely well because the offer is so darn good. So if you don't have it, take a look. Uh, and if, if you don't have it, take a real close look because that will be going away soon. Uh, and it's only going to go up in price. So get it while you can. Uh, and also learn a brilliant irresistible offer. Now, you also want to go over to the group pages, which I don't think I'm logged in. So we'll log in real quick. My one password is going to pop up because I haven't upgraded it. And now that we're in, we're going to go to group pages. All right. I'm just going to give you the down and dirty. So if you haven't played around in here, uh, I'm going to give you the down and dirty. Upper right hand corner, the pancake there, the three uh, lines, click on that. You're going to want to integrate your email autoresponders. I've already integrated my Aweber and Active Campaign. You can integrate uh, the services that you have. Basically, click on Add, select which one you have. You can add multiple uh, accounts if you have multiple accounts of any of these. But pretty much everything that you have is available here. It walks you through uh, every single one of them. Uh, some of them are a little bit different than others, but it's it's super simple. And to include Zapier at the at the bottom there, which integrates uh, the ones that aren't on here uh, in most cases. So I've already put my two there, two there, but you'll want to integrate first, and then you'll want to create a new site. And in order to do that, right below the pancake, there is new site. Click on new site. You have the option to do a blank template. I wouldn't recommend that. I would uh, recommend that you click on the templates option. And there are new templates. So we're going to scroll down, and you're going to see some new templates. And basically, just a quick visual you're going to be able to see what is looking pertinent to what your goal is, whether it's an opt-in page, whether it's a uh, 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 a sales page, what, and a whole bunch of different titles that you see here. Um, the good news is you don't just have to take the title uh, as what it is. You can, you can use uh, this yoga opt-in funnel. You can change the pictures and take that and turn it into whatever niche you're in. Um, so none of it is industry specific that is unchangeable. All of these are totally changeable and customizable for you. Um, and it's up to you just to take a peek to see which one uh, feels like the right start for you. And you pick it. And I'm going to show you what to do when you pick it. But first, we're scrolling down to see the new templates that are here. So supplies, lead splash page, real estate, lead splash page, timeline, template, car rental template, make appointments template, which is kind of cool. Like there's a lot of people in the uh, the process, like so after uh, someone opts in, 
you might have them go right to the make appointment thing. Uh, and, and so let's just take a look at this. You click on preview, you're going to be able to see it in a preview fashion. And there you have it. This, this image is totally replaceable. You do have access to a huge amount of uh, images at no additional charge. And for those who don't know, uh, there's, there's huge industries like iStock Photo and a whole bunch of others that sell the rights to, to graphics and, and, and pictures and images and things like this. So it, with your membership here in the Groove family, you have access to huge amounts of pictures and images and all that stuff inside uh, of Groove pages. So this one's pretty cool. I mean, uh, you can make an appointment uh, and then that can that would lead them to the appointment page. So it's basically an opt in uh, right there that would lead to uh, the next page to to set an appointment. Um, let's take a look here. Local business page, personal brand. Oh, let's look at personal brand, digital marketer. Let's take a look at this real quick. So this is more along the lines of kind of your home page business card. Like this would be like TomBeal.com. And so here you have it. So I'd replace the image here. I'd replace the image here. Start telling the story, you know, and giving the attention, interest, desire, and action. Like, so people who don't know me now get to know me. And it leads to different ways that, you know, different products, different courses that uh, can help them get to know me uh, better. Testimonials, beautiful. Uh, a, way to, a way to add testimonials in here. Uh, you could link to certain blog posts book a call, all this. So this is a huge time saver, right? And and this right here, if you were to go hire somebody to, to create um, uh, something along this lines, you're talking uh, some, some decent dollars, right? So it's all here, all customizable. There's that. Um, and then you can go into the more of the direct marketing uh, elements. So if you haven't been in there in a while, check out the new um, templates that are available for you. And as always, you can preview them. And then when you're ready, you can select them. Here's actually the booking of a landing page. So after the one we looked at first was more of the opt-in. And then this is the actual book, uh, the time and date. So this is where we'd use the embed code uh, for your uh, software that, that books the calls. And then you'd have the, the text that would be, uh, so that one's using Calendly. Uh, that's the one I use. Um, but anyhow, you have tons and tons of templates that you can take a look at. Uh, and then from there, you just craft your page and everything is customizable. So uh, let's just pick um, VSL. I always like doing VSL. So let's just select that real quickly. So the good part is you have the template and everything is super customizable. So right here, what they've they've changed actually is see how I can I can take my mouse and start scrolling and make this smaller and bigger and etc. You can you can do things that weren't available from last week's training. They're now available, right? But I'm actually just going to erase that. So I'm going to erase that, delete, confirm, and I'm going to go in here. Amazing headline here. Amazing attention grabbing headline. You know, whatever your amazing attention grabbing headline is, video, uh, button. When you click the button, you go to configure over here. Yes, I want this. I want in. Update. You know, and then you can link it to a URL, you know, or, and, or, or link it to uh, a pop-up. If you created a pop-up, a block, a page, if you have another page. But uh, a quick URL, you just add that, HTTP, go to TomBeal.com. Oops. I have two different keyboards, and this keyboard I always mistype on. All right. So open a new tab. And so that's going to update. That will go to TomBeal.com. You can change the color and all sorts of fun things here. Uh, it's uh, really, really simple. So color, let's just change that orange. There we go. So you see how simple and easy this is to make changes. Now we're going to go and pick a video, youtube.com forward slash Tom Beal. Go to videos. And we're going to pick uh, fasting is the ultimate life hack. There we go. And all I'm going to do for, for the videos on YouTube, all you need is after the question mark. So the V equals 
So that's the that's an odd one. I've never seen one with a dash in it before, but we'll we'll show you how that works. So basically, we just go to the video. We go to configure, and we add that in there, and we update. Boom! There it is. As simple as that. So now the cool part about all this is you have the back button up here as well. So I can oh I don't want that video. I don't want that uh, change of the of here the color. I don't want the multiple changes that I made. You can go back as far as you want, and it changes it all. So I think the next one is the headline. Yep, the the graphic, right? Whoop. So do you see? Until I save it, I can go back and I can actually go forward. So I can go forward. Yeah, I actually do want all that. There we go. It's all there. So the back and the forward are there to help you. And then you go to publish. Let's just show you that. Publish. Host the site with us. Choose a name. Sample. Test. Publish. Boom. Publish. So there it is. TomBeal.GroupPages.com forward slash sample test. There it is. Live. There you go. Tension grabbing headline that yes, I want in. And, and obviously uh, you can go modify all the other stuff as necessary. That's how simple it is to build it. Now we're going to jump in before our time ends to actually taking a look at some of the builds that we've uh, got from our members. So I'm going to go back over to StreamYard and I'm going to ask, actually, here we go, the private chat. So we have FA Miami. I'm going to go there. We're going to take a look. Boom. So here we go. Wow. Okay. So this is cool. Look at that. So I need to get rid of this page so I don't see that in the bottom. Okay. I'm going to build this larger. Here we go. So at the top, press. Okay. So let me see this. FA Miami. Whoa. That's pretty wild. Page two. Whoa. This is cool. I guess. <laughs> This is wild. What the F is that? Pronounce F-A, F-A. An interactive online business compass for beginners and vets alike. Free software training and service. Very cool. All right, this, this has some cool graphics for sure. Uh, you may want to use your mouse to hover over things. Okay, okay. Like I, I'm just, I'm just in awe. Like this is pretty wild. So, I guess we always like I always begin with the end in mind. So, like right now, this is different than a direct response piece, right? So, so I get that this is not so. Uh, without me knowing what the goal is, I do know just from me going to this homepage that this is not direct response oriented, meaning. This is probably a target audience that already know, likes, and trust them, uh, and is not cold traffic. Is my guess, and and the great part about it is, um, in the online world, that could be a quote unquote business card page, and you could build a page inside of Groove Pages that would be a whole separate page that simply real it's it's URL you know fa Miami dot com forward slash, you know, bonus gift, you know, or bonus. And that would be something that could be now a video. Hey, so I have the, here's what I've got. Here's what it will do for you. Here's what to do next. Simply enter your name and email below and I'm going to get you that free gift. So the cool part about this is this is a great business card site, which is real eye catching, real fun, um, but not direct response marketing, which is okay, which is perfect. But the cool part is, it's not like you're in the offline world, meaning where back in the day you had to rent a business space, you had to get furniture, you had to get a sign, you had to get a phone, you had to get a secretary, you had to get insurance, all these different expenses. The cool part about online is this could be the business card site and then forward slash, you know, gift, you know, or whatever, whatever name could be, famiami.com forward slash bonus forward slash gift could lead people to an opt-in page which tells people, here's what I've got. Here's what it will do for you. Here's what to do next. And so I love this as a, uh, a home base business card. Uh, and and uh, it's, it's beautiful. So press here. 
I, I definitely get Miami Vice vibes. Like, I love that. This is really well uh, done. My guess is you are an artist or have teams of artists that, that are really uh, amazing uh, at, at design and, and graphics and fun stuff. So I'm liking it. And if I, if I click on that, the greatest marketing hub known to date, in our opinion, the cleanest website. This is this is sweet. So it, I'm, I'm looking at it, but I, I'm also looking at it in a manner that most of the audience here is about direct response marketing. So it's it's uh, it's not what we would most likely see, but I'm loving it and it's really cool. Uh, and that's the great part about all that you can create inside of Groove Pages. Your imagination is the only limits. There we go. So are you tired of being tied up with subpar business relationships? Let's take back what the F is ours and control your own income. Start free today. Fastest growing online business building platform now. And there it is. Links to Groove Funnels. There you go. And it's got uh, the cool graphics right there. Like that's the F Miami, F-A Miami. This is sweet. So well done. I'm, I'm digging it. And, and I love it because it's not the norm. You broke. So just to jump in here, this is a site from Nicole Wynn and she is an artist and she said i'm going to test the limits out of this software and this is how she's creating like in case you hover over certain things you you get different stuff yeah. that is actually very unusual to create yeah. so people were like how are you doing this right. and, and and she is actually testing out the limits of this software right. which is awesome and it's not only on this image like wherever you scroll on the image there is always something Fun, something new waiting for you right. to explore. And I believe it is a 20-ish page. Um, yeah. Like artist creation, which is kind of awesome. It's got... she says you ah, wow. Yeah, this, this is this is like an experience, right? As Absolutely. You're this, this is a, an experience. It's like a kid you need to explore and find new things on the right. page. Right, yeah, it's yeah, exactly. Uh, this is beautiful. So it's definitely an artistic flair, and I dig it. And there's a lot of time, energy, and effort put into this, and uh, this is quite amazing. Yeah, I'm digging this. So anyhow, but but the fun part about this is it shows there are. I mean, your mind is the only limits uh, as to what you're capable of doing. Harmonious sounds heard in the south. Like, so this would be something like this is totally off of the norm, right? And so it gets people engaged, gets people wanting to explore and click around. So it's a totally unique, like you click on all sorts of different things. There you go, right? So crazy, so wild. Keep me posted, right? Very cool. So I'm impressed. <laughs> Uh, holy cow, that's amazing. So this, and this is this. So if you're watching this, is this what you have to create? Absolutely not. But for this particular uh, endeavor, this is the vision, right? So it, it literally can fulfill any vision that you have. The software uh, will help you do that. And and obviously this took, like I can barely draw a stick figure and, and I just like keeping things as simple as possible. This, this goes to a whole nother level. This is wild. I love it. Very cool. So I love it. Well, it actually reminds me there's a place down near Miami, like the artist. I've got pictures of all the, the paintings on the walls and stuff like this. And it reminds like this has that vibe of, you know, North Miami type of feel. I dig it a lot. So anyhow, so good job. I like it. Um, and, and I like that it's it's unique and not the norm. It all starts at the home base. Pineapple. <laughs> Super cool. All right, cool. So well done. And and it's it's got a whole bunch of neat little uh hidden hidden links all over the place that lead to you'd have to click around and explore. All right, Miami Children's Chorus. Perfect. Love it. Very cool. All right, and then a whole bunch of different things here that leads to groove. 
smooth with the groove. Okay, cool. So I, I could click around on this for, for, for ages. So well done. Super impressive. And let's take a look at some other ones here. Ron Myers. So Nicole, great job. I love it. You obviously are a super creative person. And relationship ebook. Okay, so now we're getting into direct marketing, right? So now this is the whole attention, interest, desire, action. And you want to ask yourself, similar to the bonuses, everything that's on a page, does this help progress the sale? And you're like, well, Tom, this isn't a sales page. Well, the sale is getting me to enter my email. That's the sale. So you have to ask yourself, is what I'm doing progressing the sale? So the first recommendation that I have is there's a thing called above the fold, right? And I'm on a big screen right now, and I'd, I'd probably want to go to this on a phone, et cetera. And so really quickly, you'd want to have something that's the attention and interest and, and getting them desirous, and they can take action quick without having to scroll. So the rule is if you can have some type of action above the fold for an opt-in, as, you know, so near the top, like how and where could there be an opt-in of, of, you know, right, right away, e enter their email right here to join. Because sometimes you have to ask yourself, I mean, and this is this is testing the offer. And this goes back to some things that uh, Ryan Dice tested. So he had a page that had, you know, multiple scrolls and had a lot of stuff on it. And they tested that with a page that had a headline and an opt-in box. Right. So testing the offer. So this this page, which has multiple scrolls and lots of valuable information on it or just a headline and an opt in box. Well, when when uh, Ryan Dice and Digital Marketer tested in the particular niche they were in, just the headline and the opt in box out converted the long page with a whole bunch of different details and images and, and, and uh, descriptions. Right. So when you're when you're putting together your opt in page, everything that you add in there image, headlines, text, you have to ask yourself, is this progressing the sale? Is this adding to people opting in or not? Right. And the first thing right away, I'd, I'd recommend you have an opt-in option higher in the fold. So before having to scroll, there's a way for me to enter my name and email right here. Free ebook. Are you tired of living in a, a life of quiet desperation? Topics covered in this book, it's allowing you to get rid of your problems, not your partner. Relationship success handbook. Okay. Um, this goes into a training I did a long time ago, um, but it was on the topic of empathy map. It's a great, so empathy map is a great topic and, and it answers the question. As I look at this, you want to enter the conversation in the minds of your ideal prospect or client. So empathy map, and, and basically it's what are they seeing, what are they hearing, what are they thinking, what are they feeling? So if we click on this one, um, okay, what are they thinking and feeling, what are they seeing, what are they saying and doing, what are they hearing, what's their pain that they're in, and, and what's the gain, you know, the, 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 the desired outcome they have. And so for your marketplace, I mean, this is this is a very powerful book that's going to help save uh, uh, relationships, peace of mind, anxiety, depression, possible suicide, possible divorce. I mean, this this is a really important topic. And so um, the empathy map entering the conversation in the prospect's mind. Right. So right away, people that are in unhappy relationships they aren't really, you know, what's in it for me. They really don't care about a free ebook. They just want a solution to their pain, a solution to their problem. So I like the question, are you tired of living a life of quiet desperation? But I think it can go deeper than that. And, and it might even be mentioned somewhere around here, but you want to hit on the pain points. You know, it doesn't have, you know, it doesn't have to be a struggle every, every day. Um, you know, how to, you know, all these different topics. And then and then the other thing with the empathy map is part one is completing the empathy map. Part two is doing some market research and going to Amazon and searching for uh, relationship books. You know, right. So Amazon. And finding out topics. Okay. 
so then you're going to find titles you're going to find subtitles and you're going to find um chapter titles things like that um that will be intriguing you know and and basically how you can uh do market research to find out what you know these are the topics that that they they picked for their uh chapters right and not every, you know you don't just go taking all of them but you, you try to distill and define what are the biggest topics and the biggest pain points of your target audience and and so for something like this i'm not sure if you need all of this you just need to and i love all this but it's all going back to the marketplace decides the circle that i drew another circle would be cut it in half, cut it in quarters. You know, what are the top four in quarters? What are the top four problems, challenges, difficulties that people are having with their relationship? And how can you pose questions that, that address that and help people see you as the person who can help them um, fix those things? And it's funny, I'm smiling because my nickname is The Simplifier. So I love Ron Simplified Myers. I love The Simplified, uh, uh, The Simpler Life. I love that. Um, but but you got to you gotta break through the noise and get people's attention enough to, to hit them with a big promise. You know, what's that big promise that they can, they can uh, take away here? Allowing you to get rid of your problems, not your partner. That's a good one self-love what you do why you do what you do dealing with the loss of a loved one dating marriage problems and relationships all right and in testing the offer i would i would just like i shared the ryan dice thing they did a test of you know images and text and then just a headline and an opt-in and with with the offer you could have one that's also so you could have this one, you could have one, this one that has an opt-in up, up higher, so above the fold, so people can opt in. Uh, you could have uh, uh, one with an audio that plays while they're here looking at it that, that asks questions to, you know, the four, two major issues or challenges that you find are the most prevalent. You could have a video that's there. Testing the offer is where I would go with this. Right now, this is a good start, but I'm not sure if all this is needed to fix the big problem. Like, you know, all the success of the world doesn't doesn't matter if you're a failure at home. A quote. There's all sorts of quotes that can be used. Like, are are you dealing with, you know, especially in these unique times, uh, you know, and, and and hit them with what what they could be dealing with and how to get rid of your problems, not your partner. Uh, it's a huge topic. And there's no better. I mean, this is in dire need right now with the times that we're in. So um, my only suggestion would be to add a opt in closer to the top and then test the offer. I would literally think of what's the one headline that would really get people's attention who are in crappy relationships. And like, yeah, I want that. I'm in. Here's my email. Like, and it could probably you could test numerous headlines with just an opt in. It doesn't have to be that that complex, that complicated. You're there to help them solve their problems. And sometimes also with testimonials, that's all you need. Um, so David, any insights, any feedback on this? So this was the site that I reviewed also on one of my show and tells. And basically I told the same thing. So mm -hmm. very, very shortly after the, the headline and the description, there needs to be a call to action or a call to action sign up form in case the the sale or the action the the author is asking for is a sign up and that needs to reflect immediately after that i also went in a bit more about design uh, of the page but it looks okay i would i would leave at I would leave two colors max there's a couple of different colors like green button and things like this um i would leave those out but and also the image at the end i would just put an image of the person of the author because mm -hmm. this is about the author and not, not about the author a simpler life is the is is in the vision is like what people want to look at so 
just like if it's about the author, like put the image of the author. If you're um, if you're working on a book that is blue and red, I would suggest using those colors without any other colors. It is very simple. It can be improved. It doesn't have uh, doesn't require a lot of work uh, for improvement. But just these small things, if they are corrected, I believe it could be a very good very good site. Yep, and it's a, it's, a, it's very much in need. So well done on putting this together, Ron. And uh, you know, I'm excited to help you impact uh, more people's lives through their relationships. There's nothing more important than that. So well done on creating that. All right, Roosevelt Cooper, and then we'll get to Joe, and then we'll, we'll wrap up today's training. So we'll get over here. Roosevelt Cooper, here we go. Exclusive free training reveals how I found an extra one hour per day despite my super busy life schedule. Oh, hiring a team. Okay, how to take inventory of your time, get instant access today. Okay, see, so I like the, I like this. I like how it is one color, right? I like how the the, the email uh, opt-in is right there above the fold. So well done. Uh, about the 10 talents. Okay, register now to get 10. All right, I like this. This, this is pretty good. I like it. So, um, Exclusive free training reveals. Okay, so the only thing, like, remember I talked about the what's in it for me, right? So great that you found an extra hour per day despite your busy life schedule, but how I helped, you know, Sally, mother of five, gain, you know, what, it, what, you know what I'm saying? So, so good job on doing that. But um, also, how can the what's in it for them, like what's in it for me as a reader, how I found an extra one hour per day? I would try to think of how can a headline be like you want to think of a headline that reaches through and reach through the screen and grabs them and pulls them by the collar and like holy crap that's speaking directly to me you know so how can how can the headline be transitioned from an i statement to to you how can you help them not saying that's a bad headline i love that I, I like it and i get it and actually pretty darn compelling and you do say how to take inventory of your time so it is you focused uh there but uh, so I did, actually did a productivity course with some New York Times bestselling authors of the book, The 12 Week Year. And their statement is, um, we help you achieve more in 12 weeks than most do in 12 months. Right. So it's a you focused promise, a bold promise that has people thinking, how's that possible? Right. And not saying that's the perfect and it, it still needs refinement. You know, it's not perfect, but it's good enough to help uh, the, the New York Times bestselling book reach the New York Times bestseller list. And it's with that statement of, you know, helping you achieve more in 12 weeks than most do in 12 months, right? So how can you have some type of you-oriented headline that that does tie in how you've done you've done this, but you've also helped others? Something to consider. But I like this. I mean, I'm, and and I'm a, I'm not the the best. Uh, one thing that we we also can do is get confused and think that we are like our target audience. I'm an avid student and reader and studier and always trying to find ways to become more productive. So I'm the weirdo on the far side of always wanting one extra nugget, right? So I love this and I'd be in, but I recognize I'm not the average person. And you have to think, you know, it, your, your target audience may not think like you, may not be as eager to try to squeeze an extra hour in you know, or to fit, you know, figure out strategies to gain that extra stuff. So it has to really be in that what's in it for me uh, angle. And it's going to reach to the screen and pull them in and get their attention. And like, yeah, I want this. Right. But I think you're on the right track. This is good. And similar to what we talked about on the other one is this is this is good. And similar to the Gary Halbert thing, the, the other one I would do is test a, a, a different offer. Like, so this is great. I think this is going to be good. It's going to have a nice uh, amount of opt ins. And then Test something totally different, a different promise, a different bold statement, and so, you know, uh, and, and then uh, fine tune um, which one is the winner, and uh, see what you can do to fine tune, you know, updating different headlines and things like that. But I like it; that's pretty darn good. Good job there. And where is the other one here, Joe?
Bill Powers, marketing magic. <laughs> it's awesome. It's like an awesome power stone. I love it. Premium funnel creation software. Get your free funnel creation software now. Create unlimited high converting sales pages. Your name, best email. Get groovy now, baby. Yeah, I like it. That's funny. Click here now, baby. <laughs> the awesome powers theme. Uh, it's funny. Uh, great get up right there. That is one heck of an outfit you got right there. So this is this is cool. It's funny. It's got a theme. Uh, and you know what? Some people are going to love it. And this goes back to the, the SW4. Some will, so what, some won't, so what next? I love it. I'm a huge Austin Powers fan. I love the get groovy now, baby. Yeah. Um, this also goes back to the hit business, Michael Masterson thing. And that one webinar that did hundreds of millions of dollars, they thought the other one was going to be a hit and it fizzled out. Like the cool part about this is it's creative, it's fun, it's engaging, and some people are going to love it, some aren't, right? So you have this one, and then I would, once again, go back to the Gary Halbert thing and create another offer that is more simpler to the point, and you test, right? And I like it, and here's the, here's the thing when you do some testing, the ones that I, I like, I throw in some, some fun, you know, maybe even some inside jokes that I and some others get, but the public may not get. I, I like that type of stuff. Sometimes the more creative stuff that we actually feel better about and we just, we love more doesn't perform as well as the strict, simple stick to the basics type of stuff, but you have fun and you become the hit maker. So this is one that you're putting out there. This is one song. You create another one. That's a different song that goes more direct to the point. And it all circles back to your prospect. What are they thinking? What are they feeling? What are they seeing? What are they hearing? What are their fears, their worries, their difficulties, their challenges, their, their problems? And what are their dreams and their desires? And how can you enter the conversation going on in their mind with an offer that's going to get their attention, get, gain their interest, have them desiring it, and have them willing to take action? So I'm saying this because I've had many things that I loved that had you know, fun inside jokes. And I, I just love the brilliance of it, but it didn't work, right? The numbers is really what it's all about. So this is test worthy and fun. And then I would also have another one that, you know, so you send some traffic to this one and you send some traffic to the other one that gets right to the point. You know, here's what I've got. Here's what it will do for you. Here's what to do next. What I've got is a free funnel creation software that normally sells for $97 per month you get for free for a limited time. Enter your name and details here, right? And goes right for the juggler. And you test them and see which one converts better. And uh, many times, uh, Mike and I and Rich and I and, and many of other the top names, we wish the ones that we really loved perform better number wise than the boring marketing basic ones. But sometimes the marketing basic ones outperform and beat the ones that had a lot of creativity and time, effort, energy put into them. But each of them are worth testing. And guess what? It's a it's a fun process. So uh, go back with testing the offer and being in the hit business. Uh, I like this one. It's it's test worthy. And then create another one that you test. You send you know 500 people to this one, 500 people to the other one. That goes more for the juggler, less less uh, creativity and and uh, fun and see which one outperforms. And either way, you're gonna get some that take action on this, some that take action on the other. And then the ideal test is one way outperforms the other. You know, one's at a 30% opt-in and one's at 55% opt-in. That's the that's what you want. Every once in a while, it's like 33% opt-in and 34% opt-in, you know, that and they're neck and neck. And, and there's no real true winner, but you're going for, uh, you know, you want the big winners. Uh, it doesn't always happen that way, but test worthy. So well done. I love the creativity. Awesome powers. Yeah, baby. With the groovy groove. All right. And here we go. Last one for today in different language. So this is a David, Bulgarian you know language? Side. Which one is it? It's Bulgarian side. But if you right click and translate, you can understand it then. <laughs> Amazing. Summer voucher. Voucher for 40% summer discount. 
some of our most used premium package plus free body disinfection. Where to send voucher, all right? Fresh on cleaning, 40% discount, get the voucher plus, there you go. So this is direct response. Like, look, here's what we've got. Here's what it will do for you. You know, here's how to get your, your voucher. I love it. And uh, fresh from cleaning, 40% discount in the form of a voucher. If you do not receive, okay. So then body dis premium package plus free body disinfection, okay. Then the only other thing is would the, then if I was going to test something, I would test the picture versus a brief video, you know, and, you know, look, here's what I've got. Here's what it will do for you. Here's what to do next. You know, normally it's at this price with the voucher that if you're seeing this page, you still have the voucher available to you. Simply enter your details below. You're going to get a 40% discount. Um, and once again, you're going to get this and enter your name and email below. And uh, I look forward to working with you and see if that, if the adding the video outperforms or not. And similar to what we've talked about in several other ones, sometimes the video sucks compared to the just simple picture, right? Sometimes what you think like, yeah, the video definitely should, should get more conversions. Well, you send 500 people to the one with the image, 500 people to the one with the video, sometimes the, the image outperforms the video. And so it's, it's uh, always uh, the data speaks and, and, you, you, when you remove your emotions and you aren't married to your baby, you're just like, hey, look, I want to help. It, it, you you fulfill that Zig Ziglar quote. You can have everything in life you want if you simply help enough others get what they want. You're good at what you do. You know you can help them. It's up to you to put it out there in the most irresistible offer fashion and willing to test and tweak it and modify it until you nail it, until you've got it as optimized as possible. People get it. People are taking action and the numbers speak for themselves. Out of every hundred people, 40 people uh, take advantage of the voucher. And the good news is, being that it is clear, like, look, you're going to get a voucher. Of the ones who, who get the voucher, we have 80% of them actually uh, follow through with it and, and uh, take our services on. You know, that's that would be amazing. So the numbers speak. So don't ever get married to the, the, the project. Just let the numbers do the talking and continually be testing and tweaking. All right, Robert, last one we're going to go with. Here we go. Wow. Secrets Exposed 20K gold in one hour. The greatest wow secrets exposed make 20,000 gold an hour. That's pretty intriguing. Right. Legion is out. It's time to get to work. Coming better than everyone else. Download now. All right. Pretty cool. So it's speaking the language of the target audience. And it seems pretty a pretty big promise. And when they click download. There you go. Uh, got a nice video, lists all the benefits, has a good sales letter there, and there you go. I like it. Very nice. Perfect. So it, it's, a, it's a simple uh, entering the conversation in the minds of your prospects and has some bullet points and highlights of what they're going to get. And when they click on it, it leads them over to following through on those promises. And uh, similar to what we've talked about, you know, this is one, uh, create a whole separate layout, a whole separate, sim you know, and test this one versus another one. And uh, I like this. This is great. And, uh, and then you have to ask yourself, you know, what is it that these people want? And, and is all this necessary or could, could it be a simple, big, bold promise? You know, get it now, and when they click on it, it brings them to the entire uh, offer. And the offer looks quite complete, and it's a ClickBank, so this is an affiliate offer, right? So, so basically, you're prepping them for uh, uh, purchasing the affiliate offer, or possibly you are the owner of it. Not sure, but uh, either way, it's pretty darn a good win. Then the only other thing is, if it is leading to an affiliate offer, you know, is there a way to integrate a bonus? You know, when you go, when you receive this, I also have this secret bonus. And in some affiliate uh, marketplaces, you can automatically set that up. So when people do buy through your affiliate link, it automatically unlocks or emails them or gets or delivers the bonus to them. Uh, and others don't allow that, but then that's the only other thing to consider. But this is a pretty brilliant uh, uh, test worthy page. Well done. I like it. All right, so there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I am 
pleased that you have been here to see the two uh, secrets that were shared by the world's greatest copywriter and the author of Ready, Fire, Aim, as well as the uh, lesson that I had prior to those and digging into uh, some of our uh, amazing creative uh, users of GrooveFunnels. So well done on that. And don't forget, test the offer. And also don't forget to become that prolific offer creator. You are in the hit making business like the Rolling Stones. What's the next song? What's the next song? What's the next song? The next song is a new opt-in page, another angle, testing the offer uh, on opt-in pages, testing the offer on the sales pages, continually implementing this, being that prolific offer creator and, uh, you don't have to get on base in baseball, uh, but three out of 10 times and you'll be in the Hall of Fame. In marketing, you're one offer away from changing every aspect of your life. Hope this helps you on that journey. Uh, David, anything uh, that we need to cover before we close out today's training? Um, no, nothing special to cover. I just wanted to mention that if you still want to have your site uh, reviewed, tomorrow we have a show and tell, which is a Groove Pages show and tell. Just head over to the Facebook group. You will see a post. Just put a, put your site link into the comments and then I will review the, the pages tomorrow, which is at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And yeah, hopefully I will see some awesome sites that were created by you guys. But that's awesome. basically it. Awesome. Great chatting with y'all. Uh, have a fantastic evening. I look forward to seeing you again next Tuesday. Till then. Thanks, guys. Bye.